Welcome Art Club. Today we are going to use polymer clay to make our own keychains, which I think will be really fun. So if you're not familiar with polymer clay, um, this is an example of some right here. Polymer clay is a soft, malleable clay that does not dry when it's exposed to air. You have to bake it in the oven in order for it to completely harden. So, um, this is generally used to make smaller items, which is why this works really well for the keychains. I have already gone ahead and divided up the clay into small cubes, so that way you can pick the colors that you need, and you need a lot less than you actually think you do. Um, and then I have two very simple clay tools here. I have a little knife for cutting, there is some yellow on it already, um, so if you want to use one of these, make sure it's clean. You don't want the colors blending together unnecessarily. <clears throat> and I also have a skewer um, just because that's good for the small details. So some ways in which this clay is different from the clay that we use during class. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Um, so the first thing is that you can blend colors together, which you'll see me do. So let's take a look at the colors that we have again. All right, so these are the basics. These are the colors of the rainbow along with these four neutrals down here. So if you need a different color than what is already in the package, then great, you can take two, maybe even three colors, mix them together. You can also create a marbling effect if that's something that you want to stick with. Um, something else to keep in mind with this clay, unlike the clay that we use during class for projects, you do not need to score and slip this clay together. It should just stick on its own. Especially this clay works best when you kind of warm it up in your hands a little bit. It becomes much softer and more malleable, um, especially when it's a little bit warmer, it's more likely to stick. All right, so um, what I'm going to make and why I have these colors right here, I'm gonna make a tiny little avocado keychain because of course, why not? So the reason why I have yellow is because I want to create two different greens, a lighter green for the inside of the avocado, and then of course the darker green for the um, outside of the avocado. And I'm probably gonna add a little bit of brown to that green as well to get it darker. So I'm just going to show you a couple different things that you can do with this clay. I won't show you how to do the entire thing in real time. That would be super boring. So I wanna create the lighter uh, green for the avocado. So I have a little bit of each one and I'm just going to mix them together. And like I said, some of you, depending on what you're going to make, you might actually like to keep it as like the marbled effect. It does look really cool. Um, but if you want to actually get a mixed color, you want to mix it through all the way. I think I'm actually going to add the rest of that yellow, make it a little bit lighter. Um, it does mix relatively easily. You can just move it around in your hands, roll it, whatever needs to happen in order to get those colors mixed together. Okay, something that you might have noticed, it does stain your hands a little bit. So if you're moving to a new color, you might wanna rinse off, especially if you're moving to a lighter color. Okay, so this clay is very easy to move around in your hands, as some of you have probably realized just from watching me use it. Um, so I'm going to attempt to just move this into an avocado shape. Okay happens pretty easily. All right, so like I said, you do not need to score and slip this clay, which is really great because that means when I thin this out, in order to kind of just like drape it over the back of this, it's just going to stick, especially if it's a little bit warmer in your hands right there. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to squish it. And the other good thing is that this does cut pretty easily. Like I said, I want to get that extra yellow off, at least most of it. Um, so that way I can trim off, like right here, I can trim the extra off. All right, but 
um, this does move and work pretty easily. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and get finished up with the sculpting and then I'll tell you how to use a jump ring in order to make sure that we can actually attach this as a keychain. All right, my avocado, it's, it's cute and I'm happy with it, although I might have just accidentally ruined it with this yellow. Nope, we're good. All right, so everyone, when you're done actually sculpting with it, first of all, any uh, colors that you have that are still solid, that you haven't mixed together, you wanna make sure that you return them so somebody else can use them. And then in order to actually create the keychain, what you wanna do, and yes, these are small and I will pass these out to you when you need them. This is a jump ring. And this is what's going to be able to actually get us to attach uh, the keychain to it. So in order to do this, you want to stick the jump ring in to the little charm that you have just made. So you can probably see a little bit um, that you'll want to kind of push the clay over it so that it has a nice secure connection. Make sure it's smoothed over. Make sure that that ring is on there and that it's really nice and secure and stuck. I am going, when we're done, um, to take these home and bake them myself um, to make sure that the clay has completely hardened. And then um, I will help you guys attach another one or two ringed, rings to here um, so that way it can actually hang. And then we do have um, the actual, had to grab one, the actual key ring so that you can actually hang it on like your backpack or something like that. Um, so you will probably each be able to create two of these today if you would like to. I think I'm also going to make a little piece of black olive pizza. That sounds really good right now. So stick around and you can see me make that one as well. Have fun, everybody.